Sergei Orlov said that Russian forces are occupying the largest hospital in the city, the BBC reported, preventing doctors and patients from leaving. We received information that the Russian army captured our biggest hospital, Orlov said. Second journalist in Ukraine Fox News video journalist Pierre Zarkazuski, 55, was when the vehicle he was traveling in outside of Kiev with another reporter came under fire on Monday, the network said. He was the second journalist in Ukraine in two days. Fox News cameraman Pierre Zarkazuski was on Monday while on assignment in Ukraine. AP. Zarkazuski was working alongside reporter Benjamin Hall, who has been in hospital since the incident, when their vehicle was hit in Harenka, the network said. Brent Renault, a documentary filmmaker and another veteran of covering war zones, on Sunday after Russian forces opened fire on his vehicle. Leaders of three EU nations arrive in Kiev Prime Ministers Mateusz Morawiecki of Poland, Peter Fiala of the Czech Republic and Janez Janser of Slovenia travelled by train to Kiev, the first foreign leaders to make such a visit since Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the invasion on February 24. We must stop the tragedy that is happening in the East as soon as possible, Mateusz Morawiecki wrote on Facebook. Their visit was a symbol of Ukraine's success so far in fending off an assault that Western countries believe was aimed at seizing the city weeks ago. Thousands of civilian cars escape a total of around 29,000 people were evacuated from Ukrainian cities through humanitarian corridors on Wednesday, most of them leaving the besieged port of Mariupol, said a senior government official. Senior Ukrainian presidential official Kirilo Tymoshenko said in an online post that about 20,000 people had left Mariupol in private cars. Ukraine earlier accused Russia of blocking a convoy trying to take supplies to the city. New efforts to bring civilians to safety and deliver aid were underway around the country. The Red Cross said it was working to evacuate people from the northeastern town of Sumy near the Russian border in about 70 buses. One of the most desperate situations is in Mariupol, the southern city of 430,000 where officials say a weeks-long siege has more than 2,300 people and left residents struggling for food, water, heat and medicine. The Mariupol City Council reported that 2,000 civilian cars had managed to leave along a humanitarian corridor that runs for more than 260 kilometers west to the city of Zaporizhia. Another 2,000 cars were waiting to leave along the route, the council said. Ceasefire talks. The talks between Russian and Ukrainian representatives, with the latest round held Tuesday via video, have become more constructive, and Russia has stopped airing its demands for Ukraine to surrender, said Ukrainian presidential aide Ior Jovkva. Loading Jovkva said that Ukrainian representatives felt moderately optimistic after the talks, adding that it would be necessary for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Russia's Vladimir Putin to meet to make major progress. Ukrainian presidential aide Mykhailo Podolyak said they were discussing a ceasefire and Russian troop withdrawal. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Moscow would press its demands that Ukraine drop its bid to join NATO, adopt a neutral status, and demilitarize. Zelensky told European leaders gathered in London that his country realizes it can't join NATO. We have heard for many years about the open doors, but we also heard that we can't enter those doors, he said. This is the truth, and we have simply to accept it as it is. Attacks intensify around Kiev Russian forces were about 15 kilometers from the center of the city as of Tuesday. Fighting has intensified on Kiev's outskirts in recent days, and air raid sirens wailed inside the capital. Mayor Vitaly Klitschko announced a 35-hour curfew extending through Thursday morning. Tuesday's artillery strikes hit the Sviatoshinsky district of western Kiev, adjacent to the suburb of Irpin, which has seen some of the worst fighting of the war. A residential building on Mostitska Street in Kiev, which was hit by a rocket. Flames shot out of the 15-story apartment building and smoke choked the air as firefighters climbed ladders to rescue people. The assault blackened several floors of the building, ripped a hole in the ground outside and blew out windows in neighboring apartment blocks. 
Rescue workers said at least one person was. Yesterday we extinguished one fire, today another. It is very difficult. A firefighter, who gave only his first name, Andre, said outside the building, tears falling from his eyes. People are dying, and the worst thing is that children are dying. They haven't lived their lives and they have already seen this. Loading. Shockwaves from an explosion also damaged the entry to a downtown subway station that has been used as a shelter. A 10-story apartment building in the Podilsky district of Kiev, north of the government quarter, was damaged. Russian forces also stepped up strikes overnight on Urban and the northwest Kiev suburbs of Hostomol and Bucha, said the head of the capital region, Alexei Kaleba. U.S. announces more sanctions, new U.S. sanctions targeted more individuals including senior Russian military officials and the leader of Kremlin-allied Belarus. A judge and an investigator in Russia's prosecution of two outspoken critics of alleged corruption and rights abuses are also a focus of the sanctions.